Ask almost anyone what they think about the future, and they will say something along the lines of nuclear war, climate catastrophe, hunger, pestilence, the death of life. We didn't take care of the beautiful idea that we create our own future, that we as humanity can do almost anything that we imagine. Our ingenuity, what separates us from other species. In El Salvador, we are trying to rescue this idea and start the design of a country for the future using the best ingredients that makes us who we are, while using sensibility to find the best examples of ideas from history and around the world. I believe Bitcoin could be one of these ideas. That is why next week, I will send to Congress a bill that will make Bitcoin a legal tender in El Salvador. to another episode of your did you have some news now yes i am not a robot contrary to how my voice might sound but as you can see guys just got my new digs all right courtesy of crypto we'll talk about that later but just wanted to come to you guys with some content because some big news came out of crypto this weekend if you haven't heard already the country of el salvador has now decided that Bitcoin is legal tender. It's official. He's going to Congress with it in the coming weeks. And it's the president. And with that cabinet being a lot more forward thinking than, you know, ours that we're dealing with here in the United States, I am pretty bullish on the fact that by the end of the year, in El Salvador, Bitcoin will be the legal tender as well as other Latin American countries too because it will create a ripple effect. But what I wanted to leave you with in this video is some inspiration because I know that the markets are down right now. Bitcoin's facing another correction. We may be headed as low as 18. I can, I can believe that. I can honestly believe that. It's going to get kind of rocky over the next couple of weeks, but when you see the bottom, you accumulate, all right? You can accumulate now, but don't go into it with the anticipation of making any money. That's just not the time of the year that we are in, and that's okay. We had an eight, nine month rally coming out of 2020, starting in October, and it looks as though we are going to repeat the same pattern this year. But I'm gonna cut the talking there, guys. I got some more furniture to move, but I want you to enjoy the rest of this video because I'm going to attach the headlining speaker from the conference, okay? Because the story that he tells, his name is Jack Mullen, the story that he tells when it comes to Bitcoin, its history, its present impact, and its future capabilities, it's very inspiring. And it will remind you of what we're in this game for guys okay it's really going to remind you of what we're in this game for but that being said of course as always want to thank you guys for coming back to the channel and as always hit that subscribe button you know get down at me in social media twitter facebook instagram all at digitalhustlenews.io and before i let you go you know what i'm gonna tell you have a great day have a prosperous day most importantly make that money Enjoy the rest of the video. All right. We ready? Sit. Fuck yeah. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Yo. Yo. You guys ready for this? Rhetorical question. There's no fucking way. There's no way. I promise you. One small step for Bitcoin, one giant leap for mankind, I promise, I promise. Um, so today, we're gonna talk about Bitcoin for countries, and in particular, uh, the human freedom and financial inclusion that Bitcoin for countries brings. So the Federal Reserve, <laughs> anyone know what that is? We're seeing unprecedented amount of monetary expansion from central banks right now. Um, it's very scary. The far right side of this chart um, should scare everyone in the room, no matter where you live. And
and inflation is not distributed equally, right? The fact that this is supposed to be inflation, we all know in this room, is bullshit. This chart shows no inflation. This chart tells me that inflation, aside from this, this chart, what does this chart tell me? There's a problem. This chart tells me there's no problem. That the CPI, the Consumer Price Index, defines no inflation. Inflation should never realistically exceed 4%. However, things that we all enjoy in life, that we strive for, that we want to obtain, that we work hard for, that we sacrifice and save so that our kids can go to like a college tuition, then explain this. What's this? University tuition is averaging about 8% year-over-year inflation. That's, I don't know, no mathematician, that's bigger than four, right? What about this? I was born and raised in Chicago. I want to have a family someday. I want that family to have a house that I own. It's my property. Well, after COVID, and the stimulus shock, Chicago real estate is at 9.2% inflation year over year. So unless I'm getting a 10% raise every single year, I got no fucking chance of owning a house. But there's no inflation. Central banks are increasingly taking actions that may cause harm to the economic stability of developing countries and emerging markets. This is a huge deal and a huge, huge problem. The large-scale printing of dollars by the Federal Reserve has an unintended spillover that's drastically, drastically impacting the quality of life of those less privileged and those that need help in developing and emerging markets. And we're facing unprecedented times, check all the data you want, that we haven't seen for a century. Hidden inflation causes rising rates and it crushes emerging markets. The kid I went to high school with is going to lean over a bar in Manhattan and drink a $35 old-fashioned and tell me Bitcoin doesn't matter? Privileged fucking asshole. <laughs> this is real, and it's happened, and it's happening now, and it's really scary. For those of you that aren't from the U.S., aren't from Europe, aren't from the U.K., live in a developed world, you're tremendously scared. The effects from major country policies will hit emerging countries economically and financially, both. And it's a huge, huge problem. It's a huge problem. Bitcoin fixes this. Bitcoin fixes this. We now have an asset class that has a fixed supply. And the issuance of that is known. It was known when the asset was issued first. The monetary policy is set and protected by a distributed network. There's no central point of failure in this asset. It's open, it's global, it's permissionless. It works the same in a country that's in the developed world as it does in New York City. This network carries no bias. It improves things like remittance because a lot of the GDP of this developed world is sending money back home. It lowers transaction costs and ultimately improves transaction scalability and financial inclusivity. And so I founded this company called Strike. You may know it, you may not. But the whole thesis behind the company is to take advantage that Bitcoin fixes this. We want to make cross-border payments free. I didn't launch in Europe yet. 
I want to make cross-border payments free to solve the remittance problem and the financial inclusivity problem and the absolute mess that the Federal Reserve is causing to those that need it most. El Salvador is a great example. It's a country that uses the dollar because in a civil war they lost their own currency. It's a country where over 20% of the GDP is inbound remittance. It's how capital is influx into the economy. However, of that GDP, fees can be upwards to 50%. And the true crime is that there's over 2 million Salvadorians that live in the United States. And people are leaving because of the economic instability and the lack of economic support. The lack of economic opportunity. What that does is it causes individuals to rely on crime and violence. And it ruins the security of the country. And it's generated a tremendous immigration problem. But if you rewind those steps, if you can fix the money, you can fix the world. If, if we can provide economic stability, economic opportunity, financial inclusion, and if we can build an asset that is defended by an open distributed network, and we have cyber hornets that will fight on that hill and die on that hill and protect it, and we can fix that, then they won't have to result to crime and violence. They won't be subject to, to the intermediary financial system that's taking 50% of their remittance. They won't have immigration problems, and they can love the country that they were born in. And I remember we built the first MVP, and my CBO, who's the most successful guy, he's so smart, it's like, all right, let's launch in Europe. And I was like, you're out of your mind, man. I got to go to El Salvador. That's what this is all about. This is all about helping those that need it. I'll... I'll I'll beat transfer wise later. And, and I went. I went and I lived there. I lived there for almost three months. Sorry. <laughs> um, I, try, I tried to collect a remittance payment. I couldn't do it. The ATM didn't work. <laughs> it was a lot of dirt roads. And uh, it was sad. It just wasn't a lot of hope. I gave talks. I talked to the kids. I told them, man, we got this. Bitcoin's here. We got this. And uh, I'll tell one story. There's a guy named name's Chimbera. And... Uh, I spent a few days with them. It was my first week there. And he sat me down and I uh, said, you know, my, my grandfather was a fisherman and my dad was a fisherman and I thought I was going to be a fisherman. I'm not like you. You got a Chase bank account. You get a debit card. I fish. Nothing more, nothing less. Until Bitcoin, man. Like, I got hope. I scan the same QR codes you do. When Bitcoin goes up 10%, Michael Saylor makes a lot of money. So do I. So do I. Chimbear's never had a bank account, but he's got a Bitcoin wallet. Chimbear's never had a savings account, but he's got a hardware wallet. Yeah. Chimbear saw that this is financial inclusion, that this is a network and a monetary system that doesn't hold any bias, and there's no intermediary that could tell him that he's not allowed. And we did something amazing here. And we were onboarding 20,000 Salvadorans a day, and most of them didn't have bank accounts. And, and uh, boy, we were, uh, remittance was free. Remittance was instant. Lightning Network works, man. The Lightning Network works. And uh, in real time, we were improving the GDP of the country. <laughs> and so then I got a message on behalf of the president of the country. Uh, and he wanted to talk. And I called my dad. 
going to piss my pants. <laughs> um, but we talked. This guy's name is Yusuf. And we talked about life. We talked about anime. <laughs> we talked about how to provide a high quality of life to everyone in the world. About financial inclusivity. About human freedoms and where we lost them and how we can reinstill them. We talked about the world we want to live in and the fact that we build the tools that shape the world that we end up living in. And I met more of the government. And I became friends with the security guards. <laughs> it's a big rifle. Um, and they dropped some really heavy stuff on me. Over 70% of the active population in El Salvador doesn't have a bank account. They're not in the financial system. They had a huge problem of financial inclusivity and providing their citizens with basic human freedom. And so they asked me to write, help write a bill and that they viewed Bitcoin as a world-class currency and that we needed to put together a Bitcoin plan to help these people and give them hope you give them a quality of life and that you can live where you're born in. You don't have to leave. And when you send money home, they're not going to take fucking half of it. <laughs> and I worked really hard and I lived there and I got to know the community and I made friends that I hope will be at my wedding someday. And, uh, so, with all that being said, I'd like to invite now someone I've spent some time with to share a message. My name is Rodrigo Bukele, and I'm president of El Salvador. Great ideas are beautiful and have great power. But like most beautiful things, they can also be more fragile than we think. When I was a kid, we thought about the future and we were delighted by its possibilities. We couldn't wait for it to happen and be part of its creation. But now, ask almost anyone what they think about the future and they will say something along the lines of nuclear war, climate catastrophe, hunger, pestilence, the death of life. We didn't take care of the beautiful idea that we create our own future, that we as humanity can do almost anything that we imagine. Our ingenuity, what separates us from other species, in El Salvador, we are trying to rescue this idea and start the design of a country for the future, using the best ingredients that makes us who we are, while using sensibility to find the best examples of ideas from history and around the world. I believe Bitcoin could be one of these ideas. That is why next week, I will send to Congress a bill that will make Bitcoin a legal tender in El Salvador. In the short term, this will generate jobs and help provide financial inclusion to thousands outside the formal economy. And in the medium and long term, we hope that this small decision can help us push the at this tiny bit into the right direction. I encourage politics to leave a legacy for my country. By we are doing it, and by working with like-minded people, maybe we can help create a legacy for the world. got me a gift. He got me a gift, a soccer jersey. It's pretty sick. I want to read uh, my favorite part from the proposed bill. Central banks are increasingly taking actions that may cause harm to the economic stability of El Salvador that in order to mitigate the negative impact from central banks, it becomes necessary to authorize the circulation of a digital currency with a supply that cannot be controlled by any central bank and is only altered in accord with the objective and calculable criteria. So as of now, El Salvador is set to be the first Bitcoin country and the first country to make Bitcoin legal tender and treat it as a world currency and have a Bitcoin on their reserves. Yeah. 
Strike is going to be opening an innovation headquarters in El Salvador. A Blockstream is involved, which we'll learn about later. And uh, a lot of companies in the space are going to come um, because a country that supports and fosters innovation is a company that this community is going to stand behind. I can build any feature I want, and the government wants innovation. They want us to improve Bitcoin, and I don't have to go get a fucking bit license. Uh, I'm also going to be open sourcing all the work I did. And uh, it's going to be called Bitcoin for Countries. And any country that needs help, download it from the fucking internet. <laughs> and you can contact me. I don't know what camera's filming me, but you call me if you need help. I'm not launching in Europe, I'll be there. We die on this hill, I will fucking die on this fucking hill. So, today, a country plugs in into open monetary system and gives their citizens hope. Today, country chose Bitcoin as a currency with a supply that cannot be altered by a central bank. Today, humanity takes a tremendous leap forward in reinstilling human freedom and financial inclusivity. And today, I hope we all can celebrate the resilience and strength of humanity and the direction that we're bending humanity towards. Today's a really special day. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, This is because everyone in this room, man, don't let people tell you otherwise. That you're mean on the internet, that you made a meme that offended somebody. This is all the code we wrote, all the PRs we reviewed, all the Twitter threads that defended nonsense. I didn't see Dogecoin in this presentation one fucking inch. This is this, is this community. They can come after me, they can come after any individual, I'll die on this hill, but they can't stop this idea and all the individuals, everyone in this room is gonna fight for what's right. And this is, this is why we're all here and it's so important and I hope you all can get out the shower and look yourself in the mirror and say, you're improving humanity and don't you dare let anyone tell you otherwise. There's people out there that need help and today they got help and this is a tremendous day for humanity. It's a tremendous fucking day and everyone in this room should be proud. Well, my clicker's dying so I don't have my next slide. But I'll end it. The reason I labeled the talk the way I did is because uh, I think that this is one small step for Bitcoin. It's not a big step for Bitcoin. It's just another node on the network. It's another wallet. Just another president. Just another Bitcoin hodler, just like all of us. The network doesn't know who he is. The network doesn't give a fuck. And if he gets mad at the network, the network's not going to flinch. He mines an invalid block. My node won't accept it. It's a, small, it's a small step for Bitcoin. It's a small step for Bitcoin. But it's a giant step and a giant leap for humanity. And the fact that there are people that needed hope and they found it in Bitcoin and this community's fought for this moment and I wanted to share it with you guys and I'm so proud of everybody in this room. And I, we got a lot of work to do, but I hope today you find solace at knowing that you help those that haven't been helped in maybe 250 years. <laughs> so, so I'm done. I, the clicker's done. I'm way over time, but I fucking love you guys, man. I'm so proud of everybody in this room. And look. <laughs>